Hello everyone, so we're going to now run through doing 12 lead ECGs or like sticking them onto the patient. I'm going to be using James, my wonderful assistant, thank you very much James. Hello. Um, and, um, and then we're just going to run through the process of making sure you do this properly. This is a, a relatively simple um, test to do. It just takes a little bit of thought about where to stick things. It seems complicated, but it is relatively simple. It's a very good um, cheap, well not cheap, but cost effective test to do because essentially it doesn't really cost much money apart from just the paper that you um, use um, and it's a test that can be done um, really for, um, for multiple reasons. So we are looking at the electrical activity of the heart muscle so we can use this test um, as part of our full assessment of the patient we can do it for um, healthy, or well not healthy patients, but patients who maybe come into the GP practice and we might do it for patients who are critically unwell, we might do it as a pre-assessment for a patient who might be having a surgical procedure. There's multiple reasons why you might want to do this test, but because it is a relatively simple, non-invasive test. And if we are going to be performing this test on a patient, um, we need to um, really just do all the things that we normally do for every single practical procedure, and that is to make sure that we introduce ourselves, say what our role is, say why we're there and then get consent from the patient. So, hello, my name's Tom, I'm a nurse, I'm here to do a, um, an ECG. Okay, sounds great. So that's great, so James has agreed to that, but the trouble is that some of you might not know what an ECG is, and so you have to um, gain consent from them for something they actually know what it is they're consenting for. Plus also, part of this um, procedure is going to be looking at the patient's bare chest, so it's really important to get consent from people. So if you are going to be explaining this procedure, you need to try and keep it as simple as possible. So you would want to say that um, I'm going to be recording the electrical activity of your heart muscle, um, so I'm going to need to stick some stickers to the left side of your bare chest. Mentioning that the bit they're going to have a bare chest is a really good thing to do at this stage, because um, if uh, later on when you actually want to do the actual procedure, if you suddenly say, right, take the top off, it might come as a bit of a shock to some patients. So it is important to, um, to, to mention it now so it doesn't come as a shock later. Once we've got our consent, we can then go ahead and do the test. Um, but it might be really worth thinking about having a chaperone with you. Now, it's up to you how you, um, have a, how you get a chaperone to help you. Um, some literature says that you should ask the patient if they'd be happy for a chaperone or would they want a chaperone. Um, I tend to just think I'm going to get someone to help me do this test. Because I feel that then, um, if, you, if I said to a patient, would you like a chaperone, and they looked me dead in the eye and said, no, thank you very much, I want it just you and me, I'd feel a bit uncomfortable about that myself. So I'd just get someone to help me. So I'd get Tina, who's behind the camera. Hi, Tina. Hello. Um, to come and help me do the um, procedure. Um, I then also want to make sure that I identify the patient correctly, because when we do this test, we're going to input the patient's details into our ECG machines. So when we press print, and we get our ECG to print out, it will be uploaded to eCare so that wherever you are instantly, you'll be able to look at the 12 lead ECG um, and it will be available to you. Right, so once we've got all that, and we've checked our patient's details, and we know what we're doing, we're then going to need to get the patient in a good, comfortable position. So, James, are you in a good, comfortable position? Uh, not, not 100%. Not 100%, and the reason is he looks relatively comfortable, but we are looking at electrical activity of muscle, and actually all James's muscles in his um, neck here are all engaged, trying to keep his head up. So we need to make sure that he gets in a good, comfortable position. Now James is quite tall, so if I was going to do an ECG on James, I'd ask him to scoot down a bit. I might even lower the back of the bed just a touch. I'd want to maybe add in some more pillows so his head would feel supported. Do you want to lean back? Is that comfortable? Oh yes, that's much better. Good. So apparently it is much better and much more comfortable. So once he's more relaxed, a bit more comfortable, he can relax all of his muscles, then we'll be able to get a good clear picture of what we're going to be doing. Also, what we need to do before we actually do the procedure is look for any hazards that are going to get in the way of us doing this procedure. So the things that are going to cause a poor signal or a bad diagnostic test or things that are just going to annoy us when we're trying to stick tabs to this person. And it's good to think about some of these um, things that are going to get in the way. So, say for instance, on a man, you might, or maybe a woman, you might find a really hairy chest. And if we're going to be trying to stick stickers to a hairy chest, they're not going to stick very well, so we need to razor off some of those hairs. And in the ECG machine, there are what look like very ancient razors that are available that you can take the hairs off. And we're not for Dow Sassoon, we're not doing a completely bald chest, we're just going to be shaving off little patches where we need to stick our stickers. 
Other things that get in the way are things like sweat, blood, any kind of fluids. So we do need to make sure the skin is clean and you might have to clean it with an alcohol wipe or with actually soap and water and then dry it off. An added benefit of using dry paper towels to clean the chest is it does cause the skin to be a little bit red and bumpy, which makes the stickers easier to stick onto. Other things that get in the way are um, uh, wounds. We can't stick a sticker onto a wound. Um, we don't want obviously stick a, a sticky over jewellery, but well, hopefully no one will be silly enough to do that. Um, false limbs. So if we have got a, um, an amputee, we need to make sure we put the sticker just above where the amputation has been. We don't want to put the sticker on the actual amputated limb. Um, but then we have to put the opposite sticker in the same place. Patient movement is also a problem. So some patients have tremors, or they might be having rivals, or they might be a bit confused and moving. So we need to try to stay as still as possible. And it's hard to get someone with a tremor to stay still. But we might move our limb position from the end of the limb here to much more close to the body so there'll be less movement. Other things that can get in the way are electrical signals and, and things like that. So around the patient, the bed plugs in, the mattress plugs in, the the uh, ECG machine itself plugs in, the, uh, the pumps to give the fluids all plug in, and all those can cause electrical interference with ECGs. So if it's safe to do so, it's important to switch those switches off at the wall so we don't get any electrical interference for our patient. So once we've looked at all those, we've tried to rule out as many as we can, we can then start to do the ECG. And we'd ask the patient to actually um, undress themselves, or to help them to undress themselves so we can get to the left side of their bare chest and then we can start doing the procedure. Okay, so the next video we'll just show you will be about actually doing the procedure. Thank you very much.